Is this the fountain? I don't know how, but it feels like we stumbled into something really important, didn't we? Well, there's no time to think about it that right now. Right now, it's time to go home. Right, Chris? Hey guys, Silver here, and welcome back to another episode of Deltarune, or rather, the final episode of our Let's Play series here of Deltarune Chapter 1. In the last episode, we defeated the king, closed the dark fountain, and ended up coming back home, which ended up being here in the unused classroom. Um, Susie's waiting outside for us right now, but before we go, let's uh, do some quick stuff in this room. First things first, now we're back. That means we can finally use our cell phone. So let's call home. Chris! Whatever have you been doing? I sat in the car waiting for you after school for half an hour. I called and called, but you never picked up. You had your poor mother worried sick. Chris, I am afraid I'm going to have to punish you. Huh? A friend? You were spending time with... a friend? Chris. I will make an exception this time. You can continue your adventures a little longer. But when you return home, you are going to have to go to bed early. See you soon, honey. Anyways, yeah, this confirms we're back home because we can call our goat mom, Toriel. Anyways, before another thing that we want to do before we head out is check out everything in this room. This is, you might think this is very odd, right? Look at all these cards scattered about, like, these cards, like, look at them. Playing cards spill out of a deck in the closet. Like, oh my gosh, wow, what is this? Oh my gosh, is that a checkerboard or is that chess? It's a checkerboard. There are pawns strewn on it. Oh my gosh, it's almost like, I don't know, the pawn men we came across in the, in the game? What is this? It's a light switch. Ooh, looks like the light switch was used to turn on the light. And you can't really, it looks like there's supposed to be like some sort of paper clip thing there, but whatever. Uh, let's see what else is there. There should be another thing to check here. Looks like there's a bunch of Lego bricks on the ground. And there's a poor, yellow, poorly drawn turtle. With, poorly drawn turtle of a green picture. <laughs> right. It's signed Alvin. Uh, keep that in mind for the rest of this episode. And then there's this doll here. It looks oddly familiar. Here. It's a worn down stuffed animal. You check this door here. This door is locked. Anyways, just think about it. The whole dark world. Everything was based off of like cards and chess and toys and stuff, right? Just something to think about. Anyways, heading out. Man, the sun's already setting. Everyone else must have gone home by now. 
guess Alpheus will know better than to ask us next time, huh? Well, guess we should go. See you later, I guess. Chris? Let's go back there tomorrow, alright? Aw, Susie. It's nice to see that you're making friends with Chris now. Uh, this door's locked. Check this closet. The door's locked. You can't really enter there. Um, we go back down here. We could go back to class and see if anybody's here, which there isn't. There isn't anybody. Uh, all the desks are empty. You can't really check anything. It's all the same. All the same as before, except just without classmates. Uh, let's check... Check these billboards, because we didn't get to check them in the first episode. Are you ready for the Sadie Hawkman's dance? At this dance, all the chaperones wear a giant hawk heads and screech at any students that make contact while dancing. And there's this water fountain where you run the water and it's lukewarm. Check it again. You run the water fountain. It's tepid. Run it again. You run the water fountain. It's refreshingly cool. Oh yeah, baby. Water fountains at school. You know, this might just be me, but like, I actually enjoy drinking out of the water fountains at school. <laughs> like, I don't know anybody else who's like that, and you could call me weird and like hate me for it, whatever. But like, I don't, I honestly don't care about the, about it at all, because like, it's water, man. Let me just check here. Do you like breathing, moving fast with or without legs? But usually with legs? Join the cross country team with Jockington and Noel. Nothing it seems that out of place here, you know? I mean, sure, yeah, snakes on a track team, but nothing seems out of place here, which means we really are back in the real world. There's only one more thing to check, which is Toriel's classroom. Miss Toriel is written in cursive on the dry erase board. Seems it hasn't been erased in a very long time. Yeah, I, you never see teachers erasing her name off the board for some reason. Scented markers. Huh? Wait, what? You dug out the marshmallow one and start huffing. What? Wait, what did I do? Scented markers. Huh? Okay, I didn't know about this. I, for, I, looked, I overlooked this. What the? Huh? I completely overlooked this. <laughs> you just start sniffing the. Okay. <laughs> Anyways, check this apple. It's some kind of teacher food. Yeah. Uh, there's a bunch of kids' books. Some of them used to be yours. I guess that's just what the life of a person whose parent is a teacher is. I guess. Uh, is there, and then there's all these primitive drawings, because Miss Toriel teaches a kindergarten class full of primitive people. Check this. It's the throne of the gods! I loved sitting on that back in elementary school. And then, there's some kind of primitive sculpture. Who knows what it represents? I don't get to knock it over, and that kind of sucks. But, uh, yeah. Let's go. And before... And when we head out, I'm going to let you guys just enjoy this music for a bit. Why, hello there, Birdly. I'd like to talk to you. 
Chris. You survived Susie. I was getting worried. Now you can finally pay off your family debt. How to draw dragons is 2,583 days overdue. However, Chris, I am a benevolent volunteer assistant. If you turn it in this week, I'll reduce your fine to a mere 6423. Consider it, Chris. Uh, is that dark dollars or dollars? Also, you look a lot like Rivali, and that makes me hate you even more. Anyways, uh, hello, Jockington. I, heard, I saw your poster for the track team, for the cross-country team. Chris, what's up? Caddy's working, so I'm starting on our project. I've already copied a bunch of pictures. It's the same picture of a soccer ball 73 times. Okay, uh, um, okay. <laughs> She's reading a comic full of hot demon guys. That sounds a lot like a very certain friend of mine. <laughs> yeah. I'll leave you two to your studying. Uh, teen Zone, let's check this out. There's an anime review. Read it. As a weeb, I take offense to this. <laughs> Teen's Corner. Monthly teen review. Mew Mew Kissy Cutie 2. This reviewer had Mew Mew 2 as her first exposure to the series. And let her tell you, it makes Mew Mew 1 look like a dumpster with sparkly cat ears. With a darker storyline and more mature themes. The second one treats the viewer like a real adult. Instead of like an animal that will die if it goes 10 seconds without seeing a beach ball. Not to mention, Mew Mew's character in the first one is more stale than the ramen I eat at home with my, myself with the lights off. Teens and older should check out this dark masterpiece. Signed, The Anonymous Yellow Lizard. Anonymous Yellow Lizard? Yellow Lizard, that sounds like our teacher. Anyways, uh, what are you? Oh, there's a door, let's enter it. You look through the window to the computer lab. There seems to be a dog inside working at a computer. Seems like it's making a game. Seems like you shouldn't interrupt it! Seems like when the game's finished, you can go in! You just have to trust the dog. Okay, um, you look through the window to the computer lab. Now the dog is just playing with maracas. It's not doing any work. This might take a while. Uh, really? I mean, I kind of want Delta in Chapter 2 now. Um, if you check these bo these boards here, there's a book here. You lick the page. It's delicious! This must be what they meant by flavor text. <laughs> I love the writing in this game. Oh my gosh. It's an unlabeled book. When you look inside. Oh, I accidentally returned my personal journal instead of my book. Oh no. They're putting it into their catalog. Oh no, I have to take it out every time I want to write a new entry. <laughs> um, you know, journals count as literature, and I guess that means I've been a novelist my entire life. And I guess whoever that is is a novelist too. Anyways, <clears throat> please remember my name. Please, I wrote a book to help you remember. By Hot's Fire Guy. <laughs> and I think this is the one that I wanted to look at here. Lord of the Hammer. First in the award-winning fiction series by lauded historian Gerson Boom. Gerson Boom. Sounds like a very important name. Here you go over this way, and oh my gosh, there's a really cool fish police officer here. Wow! Let's talk to the really cool police fish officer. Hey, punk! Get out of the road! You're blocking the traffic! Oh wait, it's just Asquith's kid. Sorry, I'm a little, uh, worked up lately. This job is so boring. Nothing ever happens in this town. Yes, I just something would shake things up. Huh? You got something to report? What? There's a dark world inside of the school. Uh, sure, kid. 
There's no log in Stark Worlds anyway! That's a job for the school board! Aw, you wanna help me? Sure, punk. Get someone to rob the bank so I can suplex them. Wait, do we even have a bank? Hey, get someone to build a bank! Okay, um... Do you know... Undyne. That's your name, right? Yeah. How's Alphys doing? Alphys? Who's Alphys? No idea who you're talking about. Why? Did they do something illegal? Gotcha. If I see Alphys, I'll tackle him. <laughs> They're good as dead. Okay, so I guess she doesn't know Alphys. I knew that she didn't know Alphys, ha <laughs> ha because I played this game before, ha <laughs> ha And everybody's played this game at this point, what am I doing? <clears throat> Why am I still doing this informative let's play? <sighs> Anyways, we're inside the hospital and I feel like this is a good place to talk about stuff with the nurse at the front off front. Oh, it's you. Are you here to play the piano again? The patients can't hear it from here, but I personally enjoy it. Alright, sure, let's play the piano. It's obligatory hospital piano, shrunk to fit into the corner. We're gonna play. Let's play it again. Uh, we're not on our mojo today, I'm still supposed to be a really good musician. Uh, suck! Compliment my playing. Hmm, you usually play the piano a bit more beautifully. Is everything okay? do seem a little sick. What do you mean, sick? Anyways, there's also this thing that everybody plays with. It's one of those sliding bead toys that naturally spawns inside of doctor's offices. The beads march grimly along lines. Oh, we come to this room. We're gonna enter the one on the left. <laughs> Dad, I just can't say that to her. Oh my god, I die! I literally die! Noelle, sweetheart. First time I laid eyes on your mother. I walked right up and told her she was a hot piece of work. But really? Yeah, she slapped me so hard I black it out. <laughs> Dad, that doesn't help at all. Anyhow, how's Dragon Blazers 3? Beat it yet? Nah, I'm still at the Ice Palace. I've been kind of... Kind of... Waiting to finish it with you, Dad. Oh well... Maybe... Maybe you shouldn't wait. Dad? You should bring it here! I'm bored as hell! <laughs> Fine, you win! I'll bring it next time. Oh, it's getting late. Guess I better go. I've got homework. Oh, that's the group project voice. Bird guy again. What's his name? Nerdly. It's, um, Birdly. He's not that bad, Dad. I'll kick his ass. <laughs> Dad, you're not even supposed to get up. Bring him by the window. I'll throw something at him. Goodbye. Dad. <laughs> Bye, honey. Oh, uh, hi, Chris. <laughs> well, drinking my gosh darn bells. Looks like Christmas came early. All right, Chris. Just give me a straight shot. Why are you here? Did your mother come make you come here? Really? You've grown up a lot, Chris. I'm proud of you. Wasn't too long ago, you were just the creepy kid next door. Now you're the creepy kid right in front of me. <laughs> okay, okay, seriously. You wanna chat or something? Um... Yeah, sure. Uh, how's your family doing, man? It's, I'm wondering. Chris, even if we've grown apart, we still love your family. After all, me and Asgore were college pals, right? 
Oh, hey. Now that Asriel's off to college. You think he's doing any crazy parties like me and your dad? <laughs> I'm just pulling your leg. Your dad was no party animal. Your mother, on the other hand. Ooh, boy! She'd always fuss about going, but once the party started... Yikes, man! Once she hit me clear across the room with a key lime pie. I got smashed into the smack table and toppled everything. Tasted pie, though. Couldn't complain. Alright, um... How's your... How's your illness? So, why am I in here? Well, found some crap, so it's just tests. Yeah, it's no big deal. Nothing the holiday can't handle. I'll be out of here in a jiff. Then I can go back to, I don't know. You don't you for getting tangled in our light display. Jeez, Chris. You've gotten stuck in the lights display before? How did you... Sir, how's your... Mr. Holiday, how's your... How's your daughter doing? She's a sweetheart, isn't she, Chris? Smart, kind, sweet. Couldn't ask for a better daughter. I just wish she wasn't so... Defenseless. Scary movies, bugs, Santa Claus. Everything scares her. When it happens, she freezes like a deer in headlights. Remember, she used to even be afraid of humans under the bed. Chris, it was not nice of you to hide under there, by the way. Anyhow, what's the stuff about being in here, Chris? Not what's going on with me. Just that, in the meantime, I can't be there to protect her. Keep an eye out her, okay? Will do, sir. I shall protect your daughter because she is precious. Uh, let's... Ooh, these flowers here look nice. Kind of familiar, too. A bunch of roses in a gra glass container. Hey, I'm happy your dad brought me flowers, but... Roses? What is this, man? Beauty and the Beast? That ain't gonna work, man. Both beasts. <laughs> ah, that's absolute brothership. And, ooh, a sink. What is this? It's an angel doll. The lack of facial features is unsettling. Oh my gosh. That angel. No old and decimated in youth group. It's kind of like a good luck charm to me now. Oh, right. You and Azzy used to try to make one too. <laughs> but you wasted the whole time making huge wings for it. Honestly, it's kind of wholesome. Anyways, we wish you well, Mr. Holiday. I, don't even, I wonder who's in this room. Oh my gosh, it's a big icy! We're getting out! We're getting out! Ah! And, uh, like, if you head this way, you just check and, like, police, police, help us! Help us! There was this dude in the hospital, he was scary in his bed, and. Ah! You knock, knocking, knocking! No! Police! Do your job! You know what? You really... Yeah, the police really aren't feeling it right now. You know what? Screw it. <laughs> oh, that's such a bad joke for me to make! Uh, let's continue walking. Our home is on this way. Just spending an afternoon in town and... Going to a diner. Center. Hey, ma'am. Um, how you doing? Hey there. Haven't seen you in a while, huh? I remember back on Sundays after service, you and the family would come in and order a special. Of course, things happened, and then you all stopped coming together. But every Sunday, you and your brother would still come in. He'd order you a hot chocolate, and you two'd sit down at that table in the corner, drawn shapes in the window with your breath. Must really miss him, huh? Here, how about this? On the house, hun. That's honestly really nice, oh my gosh. You know, while we were sipping on this hot chocolate, I wonder how things are going to be back here at home if I decide to go, like, out of state or something for college. You know? I mean, I'm planning to stay in, in town or college, but like, I don't know, maybe, I'm, maybe I'll think about it 
Oh yeah, I forgot to mention. We have this ball of junk that's like all the stuff that we had when we were... All those items that we had back when we were still in the dark world. We got transformed into this ball of junk. Except for this egg. It's still here. It's, um, it's drink to cho hot chocolate now. It tasted wonderful. Because they're tightened. <sighs> Give us more! Okay, fine. Um... Let's check our stats. We have a bandage as armor. It's sticky, you know? I remember there was an item in the dark world that was kind of sticky. The amber card. And then we have a Halloween pencil. <laughs> I think that's supposed to be our spooky sword, probably. And... Oh my gosh, there's more of them! Um... Um... Are you a Barney? Nah, <laughs> Susie's the Barney. Ice me up! Ice me up, boss! Ah, uh, get away from the Barney. Oh gosh, what are you? Would you be interested in trying one of our too many 24 Pezza flavors? We've got normal, cheese, ice, gravy, double ice, pepperonis, and more! Stop and down Icy's Pezza! And oh my gosh, uh, they're scary. Oh no, there's one here. Oh god, actually. Oh no, there's one here. Oh god, someone's actually here. Uh. Oh, you see, he's Peza. You're number quote unquote one spot for a piping hot P quote unquote E S of Peza. Uh, hey, hey, wait a second. I recognize you. Oh, buddy, it's me! Want to chat for a minute before I lose my mind? Make no mistake, little buddy. Ice E's P, quote unquote E. Z is H, quote unquote E. L. I can't slack off for seconds without hearing. Be a team player! There's no I in Peza! Yes, there is! You just took it out! That's okay, little guy. I've been saving up. Go to college where Azzy is. I'll get a theater degree, become a famous actor, and let the fangirls roll in, little buddy. Aw. Okay. That's really cool of you, Burger Pants. Um. Azzy. Our older brother who went off to college. How's he doing? I mean, of course, none of us know how he's doing, but. How are you feeling about him right now? Do you know when Azzy's coming home? <laughs> you can't tell him this, but I really miss the guy. It'd be sweet to cruise around town like old times. Picking up, for example. Chicks. Which, as a matter of course, may not have ever actually happened. But one time, Undyne made eye contact with me. While she was writing me a speed ticket. Oh. Well, you'll get a girlfriend one day. I I believe in you, Burger Pants. <laughs> it was nice to see you, friend of our older brother. Uh, I see Pezzo. Let's enter. Oh, we can't because all the employees are outside. Do your jobs. Oh my gosh. And oh my. <gasps> oh my gosh! It's the funny skeleton man. It's the funny skeleton man! Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! Hey, looks what? Luke is rocking around. How are you, kid? Yeah, it's real nice, isn't it? Especially considering I've never met you before. The name's Sans. Sans Skeleton. I'm new in town. What's up? Oh my gosh, Sans! Sans! You're so cool! You're so cool! I want to have your autograph! Can we be friends? We just moved here, so I hardly know anyone. Why, got anyone I should know better? Sans! 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 I want you to be my friend! Please! Please! I want to be friends with the funny skeleton man! Please! 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 Whoa there, tiger. You can't just jump straight into friendship. It takes time. Alright, that's enough time. 
Take this. Call him whatever you feel like. Oh my gosh, guys! Sam just gave us his phone number! Oh, we got the phone number of the funny skeleton guy! Oh my gosh, oh my gosh! Um, um, you should like, you should like, be friends with my mom too. Your mother, huh? <laughs> too late. I already befriended your mom last night. She's great. Came to the store to buy chocolate kisses. So she's gotta lock her door to stop you from eating them. <laughs> you sound like a fun kid, huh? Oh my gosh. Yeah. You're so cool. Oh my gosh. Um, you should like make friends with my teacher too. I, I want you in my life because you're the funny skeleton man that everybody loves. Alphys? Yeah, I, I know about her. Come to the store with a suitcase and sunglasses. I thought she was part of the mob. She opened the case and stopped it full of instant noodles. Made in small bills. It sunk out of the place. Pajamas trailing on the floor. Anyway, our relationship is a uh, purely business. So, uh, I guess I'll just let her do her thing. Oh my gosh, yes. Um, hey, uh, store? You mean this place? I mean, yeah, that's a grocery store. Unfortunately, it's closed. What a pain. I really wanted some milk. Someone ought to complain to the guy who runs it. But you run it? Anyways, um... Um, okay. Hey, bud. Are you busy tomorrow? I uh, need some help with something. It'd be great if you could come over. I live just next door, you know. Wow, you were deliberating for a while. Gee, what's wrong? Don't want to hang out with a stranger? Well, I guess I shouldn't complain. Huh? What are we going to be doing? Oh, I'm not going to be there. That'd be weird. But you're the funny skeleton guy! I want to hang out with you! <laughs> It's just gonna be you and my little brother. He needs friends. Thanks for hanging out with him. See ya. Right. Um, our home's actually in the other direction, but we're gonna keep going this way. Uh, let's knock on this door. Knock, knock, knock. Ooh, are you the human that lives at the top of town? Wow! My mommy told me about you! Does it hurt to be made of blood? No. <laughs> Does it hurt to be made of magic? Just knock, knock, knock. Huh? That sounds like the knock of a beginner! Come back when you've gotten better at knocking! <laughs> Fine. Okay. Let's find some doors to practice on. Oh, hey, it's our, it's the guy that we were, that we were, uh, that, th that told us that we are gonna get, like, beat up by Susie or something. Yo, Chris! You survived Susie! <laughs> I mean, I never saw her beat anyone up, but I'd be careful. Like, one time, me, Snowy, and Jockington were playing handball, and she just kept creepily watching us from the corner. Then, when the ball rolled over to her, she just, uh, froze solid. And kicked the ball as hard as she could, right into Officer Undyne's car. Then Undyne came out, smiling, cracked her knuckles, and totally wiped us a handball. Anyway, Susie sucks, Chris. <laughs> That's not what worries me about that. What worries me is... Jockington playing handball? I mean, he's a snake. Snakes don't have hands. Whatever, he has some sort of equivalent to it. Uh, let's talk to Snowy here. Oh, you're lucky, Chris! You got to miss class with Alphys! It's not fair! <laughs> if I skipped class, my dad would never let me hear the end of it. <laughs> That's actually not even remotely funny. I'm afraid to knock on that door, because that's where his dad lives. Anyways, there's somebody in this alleyway that we should see. Uh, oh, Chris! Chris, you're okay! I- I was really worried when you didn't come back. What do 
you go. Did you skip class? Well, don't worry about it. I'm the cool teacher, you know. You're not in trouble. Well, let me know if you need anything. Oh, Chris. D did you want to talk about something? Chris, even though you never got the chalk, you deserve an award for trying so hard to find it. So, in return, I can let you borrow, um... My homemade DVD of The Simpsons! You know, the sitcom about the middle-class monster family. It's got every episode in all 28 seasons. It's the funniest, most affordable show ever. But make sure you don't watch past the second season since they just rebooted it since the Turbo and they all started driving around the motor vehicles and started fighting giant micro demons and stuff. And the main problem about that is that it kind of lost the focus on family that it had earlier when their vehicles were shaped like animals and they were friends with the animal vehicles too. And let's not get into Simpsons Galaxy Force where the Simpsons discovered another Earth on, top, on the other side of the sun, which wouldn't a gravitational field just. Huh? You don't want to watch it? That's okay, Chris. Oh, this saucer of milk? It's for my kitty, Mew Mew. She's a perfect angel. Uh, what does she look like? Well, I I've never actually seen her, but... Ever since I started putting out milk, it's been disappearing. So, I'd like to think that there's a cat. My cat. Uh oh, these flowers? They're from your dad. He, he always asks how you're doing in school, then gives you a bouquet of them. Actually, that he always gives me flowers. It really makes me wonder if he, if he likes, if he likes the awesome comics I lent to him. Honestly, he kind of reminds me of a superhero, Chris. He's super huge and could kick my ass. Alright, um, well, I guess that's all I could really say to you. See you at school tomorrow, uh, Miss Alphys. Oh, and I'm sorry, me and Susie haven't started on our project yet. Right. <laughs> Let's continue and start heading up a bit more. We need to come to this area, where we can go all the way to the left and meet our classmate. Let's talk to her for a bit. Oh, hi, Chris! Uh, did you need help with your homework again? I know you were having trouble last time, so, um... I actually got a few things ready for you, in case... Ah, oh, wait, sorry, I can't right now. I forgot my house key again, and... Sorry, Chris, I'll help you later if that's okay. See you at school, Chris! Um, Chris? Did you want to talk about something? Um, yeah, sure, uh, do you have the key to open that gate? Huh? Why don't I ask my mom for a key? I, I mean, um, I, no. She doesn't like it when I bother her when she's working. Don't worry, okay? I'll just go over to Caddy's. Um, okay, uh, let's just talk about... Anything else, I guess. I want to just hang with you, with you here. Um, Chris? Are you feeling alright? Normally, you're not so... talkative. Oh, I, I don't mean to sound like something's wrong with you. Um, Chris? Is something wrong? Why did you go to the hospital to see my dad? I mean, I'm sure he appreciated it, but... Gosh, I'm sorry, Chris. I forgot I said anything. Oh, okay, well, I guess that is anything that we could talk about. Oh yeah, right, um, 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 I noticed something about you earlier in the classroom. Do you have a crush on Susie? Susie, that's right, you wrote Susie. Uh, when you didn't come back to class, I was worried, but everything seemed to turn out okay, I think. Um, this might ask something if that's okay. Susie, 
I'm kind of curious what she's like, you know? I mean, who doesn't wonder about her? She never talks to anyone. So, Chris, can you tell me about her? If that's okay. Well, she does eat chalk, but I don't want to tell her that. <laughs> like, that might embarrass Susie a bit. Um, I can't really tell her nothing. She was terrible to start with, but she's like a good friend of Chris now. I guess you could say that she's just a nice person. What? She's a nice person? Really? Like, really? Honestly? Truly? I mean, that's just what I was hoping, but... Wait, this isn't another trick, is it, Chris? Like when you put ketchup on your arms and told me it was blood? But really? You're serious! You're totally serious! Gosh, you should try talking to her. But if I die, you're paying for my funeral, Chris. No, honestly, she's nice. I might die too. Aww, oh, you like her! You like her a lot, Noel. I can tell. I can tell. Aww, oh, you really like her, don't you? Uh, oh, is there something I can ask about her? No, stop. Well, did it seem like she, um... Wait, you definitely wouldn't know that. Wouldn't know what? Whether or not she's into girls? Okay, no, I'm stopping. I'll stop messing with you. Um, let's head over this way. Skipping over everything on here and... This is, um, this is where Chris's dad, Asgore, lives. I'm not going to check there yet because there's something over here that I think goes overlooked a lot. Go to the lake. Oh, hello. You two are wearing night masks in the middle of a normal town. Nothing better than hanging at the lake with my best bro. Watching the waves go by. True. I want me and the boys just at the lake and what's up with this spot here oh my gosh what do you what do you do here I wonder what happens if you just stand here oh my gosh there's a onion it's an onion that thing has layers <laughs> oh I'm I'm gonna feel embarrassed showing my face if I read this out in the voice I was thinking. Uh, I'm gonna... There. Hey, there! Not a sewer! Here! It's me! You know me, right? Of course you do! I'm real popular! I just... Don't have any friends. But it's okay, you hear? Cause you're you here! Will you be my friend? Oh, oh, I'm so happy here. I'm so happy. I, I, I don't know what to do. I don't remember being this happy before. What's your name, friend? Hi Hippa, Hopper, Hopper, um, Hippopotamus. That's you. Big name, but it's worth it. Oh, excuse me. I forgot to introduce myself. Uh, uh, actually, since no one talks to me, I kind of forgot my own name. Hippopotamus! Can you give me a name? Mm -mm, it's perfect, you hear? I don't know what it means, but it's perfect! Hmm. It feels like it's shaped like me! It feels like it smells like me! Wait, what was the name? Um, um yum? It, yeah, it's perfect! Um yum, that's my name! Thank you for giving me a name! I'll cherish it, you hear? Um, Hippa, Hyper Potato Mask. That's your name, right? I want to tell you something tomorrow. Something I can only tell a friend. Come back soon, you hear? Going down? Yeah, this one wasn't really that important that I had to go into cutscene mode for that because, like, uh, I just wanted. To, I just felt embarrassed about using that voice. Anyways. I guess we can now just visit our dad and see him. Mm -hmm. 
Dum -de -dum. Oh, someone there. Just a moment. I have almost finished watering these flowers. Here we are. Howdy! How can I... Oh! Chris! Oh, uh, I'm sorry. I forgot if you don't like hugs like that. Well, now, make yourself at home, Chris. You can help yourself out to anything you like. Say, Chris, I was wondering. Perhaps when Ra Asriel comes home, we could all go to the diner just like old times. My treat. Doesn't that sound yummy? Yeah, here's hoping that Asriel comes home soon, Dad. <laughs> and if you guys go ride like old times, clean out your truck, you know. Um, I guess we might as well go to the back, see what's up here. There's these flowers. It's golden flower, protected in a container. Just all these different flowers. It really brings back a certain amount of time, you know? Uh, let's check the fridge. There better be some good food here. It's a rusty fridge with some photos in it. Oh, Chris. If you're hungry, help yourself to anything you want. Um, yeah, let's just open the fridge. All oh, inside is a jar with a single pickle in it. You put the egg you were carrying inside, too. We don't have the egg anymore. <laughs> That's what it was important for. <laughs> There's literally no reason for you to have keep that egg on to you except for this moment. You check it and open the fridge. There are now two eggs inside the fridge. Yeah, just two eggs. And more importantly, let's see the photos. A photo of your mother and your father on their wedding day. It's holding a bouquet of seven flowers. A reindeer looking monster stands nearby in a tito, tuxedo. They all look happy. So in case you still haven't figured it out at this point, Chris is a part of a family where both of his parents are divorced. I don't know why, I don't know how. I mean, it's not like this is Undertale where, you know, the fate of the entire world was at hand and that's why they divorced. But, um, yeah, let's talk to him. Yes, these flowers are still kicking. Quite hard to take care of them in this climate. I mean, you're keeping them inside. You're keeping them sheltered, man. You gotta stop hiding the seven things inside of containers. Uh, let's jump on the bed for a bit. It's an air mattress. Oh. It's certainly not king-sized. Chris, do you want to sleep over? You could use that air mattress and I could... Or, use those bags of soil. Perhaps not. Oh, Don't worry, I'll sleep on a soil for you. Or we, we could just sleep together, because, you know... Father and son. Actually, that's kind of weird. What's this? It's a small TV on top of some superhero comics. Mm, the sink, you check it. There's some dirty fur stuck in the drain. Because, you know, he's a goat. Gro goat, you mean greatest of all time? And what's up with these papers here? It's a note. It says, No rent received. Again. Stop giving away flowers. Start selling them. You have one month. Let's see. He's losing the rent. Things aren't really looking good for good old Father Azor here. He's not he's not a king by any means, but I guess his life's just been sort of going downhill ever since Toriel left him. Oh, Chris, before you go. Here, for your mother. Our secret. Have a great day, Chris. Anyways, this is like almost everything in the town. If we head up this way, it'll take us back to our house. But uh, I want to quickly head down all the way to the straight up just bottom of the town to show off some other stuff. So here at the bottom of the town, 
There is, of course, the town hall. There's not really too much of interest in here to, to see, other than just the... Uh... I'm sorry, I'm sorry. The mayor is busy right now. If you need to visit her, please start causing some terrible crisis. Yeah, there's not really too much you could do here, since, like, this person blocks the path and you can't really talk to the mayor here. He says, Hey, short stuff. Why would you possibly need to talk to the mayor? Your allowance too low? Too much candies? Lost your frisbee in the wash? Hey, short stuff. That's what the cops are for. It's kind of depressing, honestly. The mayor's charisma is about zero. No, it's negative. She works hard and has a good track record, so she runs unopposed. That's politics. Rarely. Um... Okay. We don't get- we don't really ever get to see the mayor, actually. I don't- maybe she'll appear in a later chapter. I don't know. Uh, but more importantly, I wanted to show this guy here. Remember that turtle of a crudely drawn- That picture of a crudely drawn turtle in the unused classroom? And just signed Alvin. Talk to this guy. Chris, what a pleasant surprise to see you here. And on a school day. There must be a reason that you came here at such a time. I, Father Alvin, implore you. If you have anything weighing on your mind, please speak. Chris, if you want some of our sick fruit juice, you should come to our service. Our choir sounds a bit thinner since your brother went away. Chris, it would be wonderful if you would sing with us. Or even participated to any extent. Instead of just trying to drink fruit juice. So, Father Alvin here. I think my headcanon is that like he used to go to the same school as Chris. And like when he was a young kid, he drew that picture of his father. That's right, not him, his father. Where is his father, you ask? Well, those of you who have played Undertale will know exactly who his father is since he's a turtle. And he's... right here. Gerson, renowned historian, author, and teacher. Check this bench here. Gerson Boom Memorial Bench. Throughout my career, some of my best ideas came from dreams. Take a rest here. If anyone asks, you're writing. Those are some wide, wise words from a world-renowned author. <laughs> to think that somebody like that would come straight from here. This place called, canonically, this place is called Hometown. And uh, let's talk to him just about nothing. I understand. I hope in time you may find the words you seek. Let the angel's power light your way. I don't really know what's up with the religion of this place, but I guess it, for them it's just an angel. Anyways, um, before we head back home, back up to the top of town, there's something else I want to show off. I'm not going to talk at all for this. I just want to show it off. Anyways, that's all the stuff I wanted to show off, and we're back home now. Is there anything that you wanted to take, wanted me to take a look at here? Just get the game. This game is free. You didn't have to watch me play a Let's Play of this. In fact, probably chances are you already have played it because you know it's a free game. That's the only reason why I'm doing it and not doing Undertale or something because it's a free game, and you should play it. Anyways, back home. Welcome home, honey. Did you have fun with your friends today? By the way, I just finished baking a pie. If you go to bed, it will be cool when you wake. 
but do not eat it all this time, alright? Aw, she made this pie, that's great, it's nice. It's a butterscotch cinnamon pie, it's still cooling. Um, let's talk to Toriel for a bit, let's talk to our mother. Chris, what is it, honey? Um, let's start off by giving her the flowers that at that Asgore gave us. Oh, Chris? Flowers? For your mother? How sweet! These are from him, are they not? Uh, well, worry not, Chris. I will find some place for them. Well, I guess there's another thing I want to talk about. Let's get to know our let's get to know our protagonist here for a bit. Chris. Chris, honey, you've grown up so much. Someday soon you'll be going off to university as well. Remember when you were little? You asked when your horns were going to go in? So we bought that headband with the little red horns on it. Oh, you wore it for months. Whatever happened to it? So yeah, Chris is the only human in the entire town. That's crazy. You'd think there'd be more humans, but there aren't. At least not that we know of at the moment. Chapter 2 still hasn't come out at the point that I'm making this video. Anyways, one more thing to talk about with our mother. And that is our older brother. Remember that video game you and Asriel used to play? What was it called? Super Smashing Fighters? When he was very little. He loved the green lizard from that. We even had a birthday party for him themed around it. Your father painted all of these eggs with spots as decoration. Oh, your brother loved it! Until the next day, your father cooked them all for breakfast. Your brother just kept crying. Ever since then, he's hated that book about eating green eggs. Ah, oh, that's terrifying. Uh, oh yeah, I should probably show this off. This trash can here. We gave her the flowers, but if you check this trash can, it says that somehow it's emitting a pleasant floral scent. Meaning she's throwing away all, this, all those right now. And also, now we're back home. I guess we might as well come around full circle and do what we did in the first episode. And play around with the toilet! Yeah. <laughs> we are flushing the toilet over and over again! We are going to mess around with this toilet until the end of time! <laughs> yes! Flush it! Flush it, baby! Woo! Flush that toilet! <laughs> okay, that's it. That's all we can do. That's all the dialogues we can get out of her. Anyways, with that, I believe it's time. Let's enter our room and just end off the day. If we take a look in the room here, I can't remember if I said this in the first episode like a month ago when I started this series. But, if you look closely at this room, you can see that with this side being Chris's and this side being Asriel's, <clears throat> you can see that there's a very clear difference. Over on this side, you have all these trophies and stuff, all this stuff on the walls and all this other stuff on his decorations. He has a computer! <laughs> you can tell that somebody's love when they have, have like their own little desktop. But over on Chris's side, there's nothing except just this cage and a gray bed. You can see that the difference is that Chris was always the quiet kid, always the one who was just so sh who just never really seen in the same regards as his brother. He was always seen in the shadows. 
with his older brother being just the talk of the town, winning all this stuff, participating in the church, getting all these trophies, getting all these awards, and just being well known. Check under his bed, he has this box full of CDs. He has a very, he's very, I don't know how quite how to put it, but Asriel just gives off a different vibe than Chris does. But yeah, it's interesting to know that in this, in these final moments of the game, we get to learn more about Chris and the town that he lives in and his situation and everything. That he doesn't have much friends and he's just sort of this way. But yeah, I'm rambling on too much. If you check the bed, if you go to bed, this chapter of your adventures will end. Will you go to bed? Guys, it's time. We're gonna end off this chapter. Let's do this. When the light is running low And the shadows start to grow And the places that you know Seem like fantasy There's a light inside your soul That's still shining in the cold With the truth The promise in our hearts Don't forget I'm with you in the dark Anyways, that's it for Deltarune, chapter one. I hope you guys enjoyed going along with this game alongside me. I hope you guys enjoyed my take on the Let's Play format with this. And I guess I have some thanks to make. Firstly, probably the most important thanks I want to make is to my subscriber, Dog. Thank you for recommending this game. <laughs> I already played this game before, but like, honestly, I I had a lot of fun making this series. I'm probably not gonna do anything like this ever again. I mean, I'll totally do this for chapter two when it comes out. But thanks for recommending this and giving me the idea of playing it. Another thanks I want to make is to my friend Charisma. Thank you for making the th the thumbnail uh, the thumbnail template that I use. It's really helpful. I didn't want to make that shiz on my own. So I want to thank you for making the thumbnail template that I use now. 
for these videos. Who else? Who else? I want to thank my friend uh, Uni on Discord for being for being around to help out with this series every now and then. Just be somebody who I could talk to while I while I work on research and stuff. And I guess if there's anybody else that I I'm forgetting about, it, I'll just say that I want to thank everybody who has helped me out with this series and just all you guys for watching. Until next time, we'll come back in Delta Rune Chapter 2. Okay, I shouldn't promise that. I'm going to be going to college. I'll probably be in like college by the time it comes out and studying for stuff. <laughs> Anyways, um, yeah, that's it. This is the end of Delta Rune Chapter 1. We'll be going back to our old normal videos that I used to make. And yeah. See ya.